Friends, hello again. Uh, I'm gonna make a few comments here on one, on how to select the scientific paper. And the second one is how to read risk ratios and risk factors by looking at their graphical rep uh, representation and their full probability distribution. Okay, so when you want to debate someone, you owe it to yourself to not cherry pick statements made on the web that appear to be erroneous. Maybe maybe they are, uh, maybe they are not, out of, they, are, they may be out of context. What you must do is look at the opponent and ask for the most powerful paper they got and work with that. That's the Popperian approach. And also you yourself look at their most convincing argument. That's what you must be doing. So I was extremely lucky to have Ms. Nina Teichholz barge into my Twitter feed with the following statement that critical trial data on 67,000 people shows that saturated fat fats don't cause heart disease. And of course, the paper was second part of her statement, probably what, what she, was, she was most interested in uh, driving, is that it was ignored by mainstream media because the mainstream media is bought. And perhaps the alternative media to which he, she belongs, those free people on Twitter, those who go on Joe Rogan, as she herself has um, done, are better representative of <sighs> Uh, reality and they're there to communicate the truth. Okay, let's focus on that paper. That's the one being offered. There's been some backtracking on, on by her by saying none significant, but this is that. But 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 let's see. Uh, Fifty-seven thousand participants. There is a reduction of cardiovascular events over a period by seventeen percent. It's a meta-analysis study, so it includes a lot of studies, but uh, I'm not going to get technical of why it's okay. Uh, with a confidence level that is offered by the paper, uh, 0.7 to 0.98. And uh, um, what we have a, um, also as a result is a drop of 4% of all cause mortality, and of course, with a wider, naturally, because mortality, fewer people die and <laughs> will die in a sample than get disease. You, you must particularly get a disease to die, and, and mostly from uh, heart problems. Um, the the 4% uh, drop mortality was a wider band, confidence level of 2.5% each side, which is also wrong. You should look at one side if you're making a statement. Uh, 0.9 to 1.03. The researcher freaked out with a 1.03 because the uh, confidence level crossed the one level and didn't know how to interpret it. Let's see how that works. You can reverse engineer the poverty distribution and it doesn't matter, it's insensitive. You're robust to what choice you have, whether you want to take a, a gamma distribution, a, a normal distribution, or a uh, that the one that I think that fits the most, a proportional one like the log normal. Uh, look what you get. You have the zone here in pink showing uh, the probability of uh, the paper being, uh, the statement being wrong, that there's a drop of of a drop of CV, uh, cardiovascular events resulting from uh, the uh, a <sighs> lowering of the consumption of uh, saturated fat in the, the sample. And then of course you have the white one, the ratio of pink to white, the white one is 98.6%. So 70 times, <laughs> yeah, that's the odds ratio. You're 70 times more likely to be correct by lowering your uh, saturated fat when it comes to CVD. Now you get excellent results, 4% drop of mortality, all cause mortality. But of course you have a smaller sample, fewer people die. So you're gonna have a bigger band. And you know what happens as you increase the sample size, the distribution will converge. And so in this case, you have more in pink, but it's still about 6.4 to one. 
I'll get technical later on by showing that effectively you can use, particularly for the mortality from cardiovascular events, you can use the, the, the known distribution uh, from a uh, wider sample. You know, it's not like uh, people don't live longer after having a cardiovascular event. So you can't make claims, hey, you know, we definitely have an increase in cardiovascular events, but we're not sure about mortality. We are sure about mortality because we have a lot of data that's why. So the, so the people in the, for the paper did not do that and didn't realize that we're dealing here with an upper bound of mistake, not a, a mean mistake anyway. So the odds ratio is uh, 6.4, good. So therefore that statement is completely bogus. Um, cut down your saturated fat, but not too much. Uh, and if you're gonna have saturated fat, try to have the ones your ancestors uh, were having uh, if you're lucky <laughs> to find anything similar, because I doubt it, we live in a world where uh, what we eat is cow meat, that is cows that don't resemble <laughs> those that, that were eaten in the past, assuming your ancestors ate cow, mine did not, I'm Mediterranean. Anyway, so, so this, is, uh, this is how to approach the problem, two problems. One, when you deal with uh, those alternative people on the web, and the second one is when you have representation of uh, effectiveness <laughs> that uh, you must test by looking at it graphically and in distribution space, not just uh, people just throw words, you know, just look at the problem distributions. Picture is worth a thousand words. So this is the result one, and this is the second result. The third result is in line with, the, with, with, with what we can expect, even a smaller size for uh, those who died of heart attack because of fewer heart attacks than than uh, more general uh, uh, events. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks for listening. And, and, and notice one thing, effectively this debate, these arguments uh, led to, of course, some kind of reaction. So uh, I, I was mistaken. I thought the person was a scientist. Turns out that uh, we're not dealing with scientists. So therefore, they're going to attack. First of all, it was fat shaming on, on the part of uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Tycholt, she engaged in spreading fat shaming, but his fat, so how could, you know, first of all, <laughs> I will, at some point I was overweight. I haven't been overweight for three years. And so it's not just that, but the mere fact of using this argument is uh, downright uh, despicable. Even more despicable is, is using my reaction to the argument, to that, uh, my reaction to portray me as someone who doesn't like debate. This is the debate, give me more data, Show me another paper, let's talk, but make sure that you brush up your statistics before getting involved in the debate because ad hominem attacks, they don't work very well. Thank you very much, have an excellent day. And again, some saturated fact, not much, bye now.